Hello again viewers, Eric O here at Self Main Auto. I'm going to continue on with part three of our Subaru head gasket that we've started. Unfortunately, I don't have the heads yet. I did, however, call the machine shop today to find out what the heck's going on because we've been going on, well, three, four days actually, you know, plus the weekend. So it's getting dragged out a little bit. Uh, evidently, they've had to order some new valve guides for it. They're supposed to be in today and being installed, so we'll be able to pick the heads up tomorrow. Uh, so that's good. Uh, so I'm going to go through and now that we know everything is A-OK -okay with the heads, we're going to start the process of cleaning up all the all the mess. So really there's not a not a lot to look at on today's video, but I'm going to go ahead and just uh, kind of answer a couple questions that were, were thrown out there. Or, well, not really questions. A lot of people were commenting on the, uh, you know, pliers that I used, uh, you know, often to uh, unhook electrical connectors. So I'm going to show you those. Those are just some hose pinch pliers been some huge interest in the uh, that uh, Ingersoll Rand 3H drive hammerhead air ratchet that I use. Uh, I, I do like that a lot and I do use it a lot in my videos so a lot of people take interest in that. And uh, the power bar uh, that we use to bust the uh, crankshaft pulley loose. So I'll just kind of show you those a little bit more in detail and talk about them for just a minute and then we'll uh, move on to the Subaru here. So here's that uh, IR hammerhead air ratchet. I guess if you can call it an air ratchet or 90 degree impact, I guess would be more um, more technical. Um, it's the 215 Max, that's what they call it. So you can see this one here has been around and beat up and banged around. And um, I bought these when they very first came out. One of the problems they had on the earlier ones is the heads would come loose. Uh, so I I've fixed that on this one. Um, the other thing that happened was the uh, the air valve on this one broke. Um, so when you would switch it from forward to reverse, this would just keep spinning. That was a pretty simple fix. I just called IR. They sent me the parts, tore it apart, and fixed it. Um, the only the only thing I would say is um, the head on these. They don't sell the individual parts. There's like a thrust bearing inside here that uh, can come apart. If you need a new head for it, you have to buy the whole upper half of this. Uh, Ingersoll Rand, I believe, has these, uh, they must have these outsourced. I don't know if they don't make them in-house or what the story is on it, but um, even though you can tear this apart, this just basically on threads, there's a bearing in there. Um, and it's just like a, uh, like a high point gear set, basically. And even though you can take it apart and there's a bunch of pieces in there, you can't buy any individual parts for that from IR, but uh, super powerful tool, really, really handy. So if you're thinking about getting one, I just go ahead and buy it. This thing has been used and abused and beat around through, you know, shop life every day and, and uh, definitely like it, so. The other thing I got asked about are, uh, are these pliers here that I use uh, quite often in the video, not only for uh, removing hoses, uh, but I used them on electrical connectors to get on the electrical connector and, uh, you know, pinch the tab down and then release it. So a couple people saw that and thought that was pretty handy. Uh, you can get these like in a little three-piece set. Uh, they, they work really, really well. <laughs> I use them more for electrical connectors than I do for actual hoses. Uh, so so those, those are really good. These ones here are, uh, these ones here are Mac. That's who makes these ones. I've seen these in all different, all different kinds of shapes. And you know, you can get them with like 90 degrees, 45s, straight ons, all, all different kinds of stuff. So. Yep, so that's what those were. They work pretty well. I've had these for a long time. And then the uh, power bar, I'll show you that. So we've got the power bar, which I use quite often, mostly on these uh, Subaru crankshaft pulleys or other crankshaft pulleys. But uh, I showed that in the other video there. Basically just put a socket on it, stick it on the uh, you know crank pulley bolt. And I whale it with a hammer and it you know just cracks it loose. And I'll be honest with you, that's what I've used it on probably hundred percent of the time. I don't know any other application in which I've used this, but uh, you could probably use it on you know flywheel bolts or you know anything that you want to bust a, a bolt or a nut off without you know on some kind of rotating assembly. Um, but uh, I typically will grab a impact when I can. Uh, to remove stuff but uh, yeah so that's the power bar I do know some people were interested in that saying that uh, watching my videos is making them go broke <laughs> but uh, yeah so anyhow there's that you know I've probably mentioned it before a lot of other comments you know people ask me about you know about my tools my toolbox and 
and things of that nature. But 35 years old, uh, I grew up in this industry. My you know my parents owned a shop, and and uh, you know it's been around us my whole life, always tinkering and fiddling on stuff. You know, even when I was a kid, you know, screwing around lawnmowers and you know anything that you could get to run. So you know, I bought my first uh, socket set when I was 14 years old, and I uh, still still got it. Still using the same 3 8 impact sockets that I bought when I was, uh, you know, 14. First time I've tool truck. Uh, bought my first 3 8 uh, I had a little 100 foot pound 3 8 Mac impact at the time. As I remember, it was like $99. So, <laughs> so I've been uh, kind of collecting stuff forever. Um, and it just accumulates because I don't get rid of it. So, anyhow, there's a few of the tools that we've been using on this job. So, we're going to head over to the Subaru, show you a few things we're going to do. It's going to be a pretty short video simply because all I'm really doing is cleaning stuff up. Before we get too far, I guess there was one other thing that I was going to uh, mention in this uh, video here. I've been asked by a couple people um, basically how you keep track of you know everything you take off. So, uh, you, know, I was, <laughs> you know, some guys were saying if they tore that many things off, only half it go back on. But I don't know, that's a hard thing to explain. I've been doing this a lot of years. So you just, I mean, these you could probably realistically, I mean, not to toot my own horn, you could probably throw everything in a coffee can. I could, you know, put it back on, but that's just because I've done a lot of them. Um, at any rate, I'll show you here uh, in the back of the Subaru how I typically do it, you know, particularly if I'm doing something that's unfamiliar. So you can see here, a lot of this stuff sits in the back of this car. Now, um, you know, just to remind you, I mean, you have to, if you're working on this, you're doing this for a customer, you have to be respectful of their stuff. You don't want to be throwing, you know, a bunch of greasy parts all over their carpet, things of that nature. So, you know, naturally you're not going to toss, you know, valve covers and stuff back there. You know, under the, you can see like under the battery, you know, I put down a mat first, you know. So, you know, use your head a little bit. Uh, you know, if it's your own car, you know, you just do whatever you want. You know, you want to throw it in the front seat, you know, go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, at any rate, I would take, uh, I like to keep like these little plastic, you know, covers and stuff you get, like you buy a water pump or, you know, you get a reman engine or something that has these little plastic covers on everything. I've got boxes full of these, so I use these for little cups. Like, you know, I stick all the exhaust bolts in one and this here's all the intake manifold bolts. Um, you know, if I take the timing covers off, you just throw all the timing cover bolts in with the timing cover. Uh, what we got here, like these here, the power steering bolts. And a lot of times what I can do is, I mean, you'll look on some of these, uh, they actually have some old writing on them um, that I don't, uh, you know, from another job that I did. These ones I don't have to label, but you know, if you got old plastic stuff like this, you can just label it with a Sharpie and that way you know where things go. Take stuff like the valve covers, for example, you know, same thing. Pull the part, stick the bolts with it. Uh, you know, in some cases like this, you'll have bolts that are that are different lengths. You know, like we've got these uh, these short ones here, and then we've got these big long ones. Well, if you didn't know where they went, or you couldn't use you know the clues on the uh, you know valve cover to you know tell you like, hey, you know, long ones go here, short ones go here. Well, then you better you know come up with a different method of storing them. Yeah. So in that case, you know, if I didn't if I didn't know where they went, or say there was. Uh, well, so this one video I haven't even posted yet, I've got this video I did. Uh, I did a time and cover job on a uh, uh, late model town and country. And so that's got a lot of bolts going around it, all different lengths, different sizes. So what I do is I just take the, the new gasket, put it up on a piece of cardboard. I use our spray tack that we use a lot for gaskets. Psh, spray it down. That shows me all my bolt holes. Go through it with a screwdriver, poke all your holes in it. And as you take the bolts out of the car, stick them in the cardboard. And, uh, you know, that works pretty good. And you can do that with... Uh, you know, like rocker arms, push rods, um, you know, intake bolts, anything that, you know, if you do, all you need is a piece of cardboard, if you have a bunch of holes in it, you know, draw yourself a picture and, you know, it's as simple as that. So keeping track of stuff isn't, isn't that difficult, but it is quite important. So those are just a couple ways you can do that. So I hope that answers that question. So now we can get back to the car. Can't quite remember where I just left off because a few hours have gone by, but uh, that's where we're going to begin. Got to put a water pump on this car too, uh, because we're doing a head put a new time belt obviously and that's at a hundred and whatever thousand hundred seventeen I think was on it so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, pop the thermostat housing off it unhook the bypass hose there and or the, and uh, pull this uh, idler pulley off and zip the bolts off it get that out of the way
Now that I know you guys are kind of tool junkies, I don't know if anybody's ever seen any of these before or not. These are uh, put out by Mac Tools. I'll give you a few more seconds to take a guess. The hose clamp pliers. Anybody that's ever fiddled around with uh, all these, I know the technical name for them, you know, the pinch style hose clamps there. Anybody's ever messed with those and had them come off and twang their fingers and <laughs> lost a little bit of skin. So I don't know if you can see that in the video or not, but uh, it just allows you to, uh, you know, to get a good bite on these. You know, these the little uh, little teeth on there will actually will hook into the open part of the clamp, and uh, you know when you clamp on there, boy, it grips those it grips those style uh, hose clamps there really well. So. I haven't seen anybody else that makes these. Um, I know Irwin actually used to make the vice grips for for Max. I don't know if this is their own design or maybe I just haven't seen them in any other you know tool catalogs or anything yet. But a little two piece set. I've got this set. They're this size and the next size smaller, so they're kind of cool. kind of had a random thought one to share with you so this uh, so like this is a little box of like the little plastic uh, pieces that come like in new water or like power steering pumps and rack pinions and so these are extremely valuable <laughs> so that's what I was talking about earlier saving all the little plastic container little plastic block offs and stuff those are real handy to keep around and uh, you know, I keep a, a assortment of like the bigger ones too. So these are kind of handy, just sticking bolts in, things of that nature. You know, I'll save little boxes that come like uh, like little wheel bearing boxes, tie rod end boxes and stuff. Those are real helpful. And bigger things, you know, coffee cans and you know, little plastic containers. I've got like this big roll of plastic baggies from the hardware store, you know, where you go pick your own bolts. And so all kinds of little things like that that work out great for uh, storage you know especially long-term projects like this you know something's going to drag out four or five days you know if you're waiting for parts it's kind of nice to be able to uh, you know throw them in a container label it with a sharpie and, and do it that way so just thought i'd tell you about that So that's really one of the first things I like to do. Heads are off, everything's a mess. You know, there's crap all over the engine compartment. Um, you know, you haven't cleaned out, uh, you know, any of the water galleys, the, you know, the uh, cylinders, you know, anything, everything's still all dirty and cover of stuff. So you kind of just, you know, just like your washing car, work from the top down. Same thing here, you know, just blow all that crud out, even the stuff up on the cowl, you know, the last thing you want to do is, uh, you know, get ready to, you know, set the intake on or, you know, put a valve cover on. And, you know, have your furnace kick on or whatever the case might be and, you know, stir up some of that stuff and, you know, drop it in on your new part. So uh, that's why I just try to blow it all out of there right now. It's, you know, we're in the <laughs> biggest, biggest part of the mess right here. So let's get all that stuff blown out of there. And now we're going to go ahead and just work on getting the, uh, you know, surface of the block cleaned up. And, uh, you know, from here out, it's really not, not that difficult, really not a lot to show. Um, you got to use some common sense, you know, don't go in there with anything, uh, you know, like a cookie wheel. You know, what we refer to as cookie wheels, a little uh, little die grinders. You don't want to go in there and start going bananas with one of those. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to take and start getting things cleaned up and kind of bring you along, show you a little bit of the process anyhow. Well, right, it's going to be kind of difficult to see with my arm and everything in the way, but what I'm going to do on the, on the surface of the uh, block here, so I've got this uh, another tool for you. <laughs> it's a little carbide scraper. It's just got a four-sided carbide piece of carbide on a, on a scraper handle that's bent. Um, this is, uh, you guys are going to think I'm biased here, but uh, this is also put out by Mac. Uh, it's a really neat, uh, neat scraper. Um, it allows you to, uh, a lot of times I use it like this, I'll have my finger down on it. 
you know, I'll come onto the whatever surface I'm sc scraping, you know, I'll push, push against it like that, be able to keep it nice and flat, and just, uh, you know, just go along and start peeling off the crust and all the old, uh, all that sealing, that coating material there that's on the factory uh, Subaru gaskets. Uh, you want to make sure you get all that off. They actually have a service bolt in out on that. Once I get that off, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, clean them off with uh, some brake parts cleaner and a nylon brush and going to spray out all the water water ports here because this thing's full of, uh, this thing's right full of the sludgy, slimy crap. It's kind of a black colored looking goo. Um, I think it's where the oil and the coolant mixed or something there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's got a lot of, a lot of sludge in it. So I'm going to take and reach in there and get all that cleaned out. But yeah, you can see it's full of some real nasty stuff. So that's basically all I'm going to do here and uh, go on from there. Sometimes you have to go back through with the scraper and get a few spots that you might have missed, you know, where some coating's still stuck on there. What I was doing just there, in case you didn't catch it when I first said it, but basically these are the water jackets that go around the cylinders here, and I was just spraying them out with brake parts cleaner to get that sludgy stuff out of there. So this kind of we'll we'll crack it all loose. I'll use the blow nozzle to uh, you know to blow it up out of there, and uh, this will help dissolve any of that uh, oily sludge there, get it out of there, so it doesn't contaminate our new uh, coolant uh, coolant when we put it in there. So. I'll take a look in the radiator, see how much this crap's in there too. I usually blast out the cylinders. See a lot of videos on YouTube, everybody's wondering if uh, seafoam works or not. Well, I don't know. This is how you, one way to clean carbon off your piston, I guess. So, let's wipe some of that trash out of there. Let me grab a blow nozzle. stuff coming out of that lower water jacket here. Naturally, I would expect it to settle on the bottom, so. We got a bunch of it in there. I think we've got the majority of it out now. I like to go through and blow out anything that might have got down in the head bolt holes. All right, you've got everything cleaned off the best you can. What I like to do is just, I'll go around with a clean rag and we'll just wipe up around the cylinders, get them, make sure we got all the debris and everything out. We'll stick the rag in the, uh, you know, along in the water jackets and you know, I'll go along and make sure we've got all that sludge out. Uh, the oil returns here, these just drop back down into the oil pan. What I'll usually do is I'll just hose these down uh, with some brake parts cleaner to kind of flush that, you know, any, any debris or sediment that was sitting there, you know, I'll flush it down in the oil pan, it'll cling to the oil, and, and uh, we're gonna pull the drain plug on it and, and let this thing drain, uh, you know, probably 
good 24 hours or so and you know any any sediment or anything that might have gotten there is all going to come down and out with the oil so uh, if not anything that's really really light and you know small micron size is going to be picked up by the filter anyways so not too awful worried about it i've done like this for for a lot of years and never had any any issues um, of course uh, i do try to cover the exhaust uh, when I'm getting the, all the initial stuff off because you don't want anything big dropping down in, in top in front of the catalytic converters um, You know and the same thing with the uh, oil return side here uh, Down in the bottom of the block is you know, I mean if you can avoid dropping, you know an Acorn or you know big chunks in there then then by all means do that get stuff out of the way You know, you're gonna have to use a little bit of a little bit of common sense when you're when you're cleaning stuff off um, But the surface does need to be clean and straight and flat and I uh, can't have any debris on it. Uh, I mean, not even, you don't want anything. Uh, you don't want anything getting in between the head, the block and the and your new gasket, that's for sure. You know, particularly on these, um, there's just no, there's not a big margin for error, not a huge ceiling surface here. So, you know, just do the best job you can. Cleaning it now, uh, because, you know, once you put the head on, it's, you know, it's too late to go back and do anything. Um, so, and you got the um, oil supply here to, to the head. There's one on each side. You want to make sure that uh, you know you don't get a bunch of bunch of trash down in there. Um, if you do have a lot of junk on your engine, you know it'd be wise to you know try to plug that off. Um, but uh, you know the majority of this is just common sense. So a little bit of that goes a long ways. I'm going to continue on. I'm going to do the other side. Do it the same way. I'm not going to bore you with you know the whole process. It'll take a little bit of time. And I would say, you know, when this is off, if you can, you know, if you want to go in and, you know, wipe up a lot of the mess on the uh, cross member and stuff here, you know, go ahead and do that too. So, go ahead and got everything cleaned up using that same method. Uh, I've got the top of the exhaust flange there cleaned up. I just use a cookie wheel on that. It's no big deal. Uh, you just don't want to get a lot of abrasive up on the up on the block itself. But uh, see, we got the driver's side block all cleaned up. Come around. I did the. Uh, same thing there on the water pump, where the water pump housing, or on the water pump housing there on the block. So that's all cleaned up. And then, you know, again, just came over here to the passenger side. Use that same method. Got everything taken care of there. Um, everything cleaned up real nice. Stuff comes off good. Um, and like I mentioned, uh, well, you can see I got the oil pan underneath. I did pull the drain plug, pop the oil filter off because it's going to sit overnight. So give that a chance to uh, drain out there. Yep, so everything still sits here tore apart on the bench and uh, you know I've got it separated left and right so just basically gonna grab stuff go back to the parts cleaner um, the thing on these is they have all this silicone this gray uh, ultra gray silicone all that has to come out and by all of it I mean every bit of it and it's not fun to take out um, I'll use like a little 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 tiny screwdriver a little pocket screwdriver and just go around there just getting it out and um, you know, you just you do what you got to do. It's all got to come out. Um, let me look at that. Uh, how lucky do you get? That thing just pulled out one piece. <laughs> After I tell you, it's difficult. So sometimes, sometimes you get lucky like that. But you can see this stuff's all hard and brittle. And um, yeah, this stuff is great. Wow. I, I recall that previous statement. <laughs> now, anybody doing a Subaru or if you've done them in the past, you'll know what I'm talking about. Man, that stuff usually comes out of there so hard. Um, but yeah, this stuff is just actually falling right out. So. Yay for me. Um, but if you recall, and I think it was in video two, when we disassembled these heads, I mentioned that these actually came off quite easily. Typically, man, these heads are, or these uh, uh, cam covers here are just glued on and uh, come off really, really hard. So it does make me wonder if somebody has been in here in the past. I don't know. Um, this is what we use when we put them back together. Oh, can't see it. Let's see. Yeah, the Permatex Ultra Gray. Uh, this stuff works great. Um, one of my one of my favorites I use a lot of ultra gray and the ultra black so but you'll see that when we reassemble it I'm um, just gonna get everything cleaned off and blown off and we'll come back to the back of the car uh, the intake you know we're gonna I got stuff laying on it right now so I won't flip it over but I'm just gonna clean off the intake ports really not much to clean off there valve covers they're super nasty this is actually one of the dirtiest Subarus I've tore apart usually they're not this ashy um, you know particularly in the late model stuff uh, you know, we tear it apart with, you know, modern day conventional oils. Uh, usually they're not, you don't, you just don't see this much. You don't see a lot of, a lot of sludgy buildup or, you know, big ash deposits. So I don't know. I don't know the history on it. These folks bought it used. Uh, these spark plug tube seals, 
uh, these things are rock hard. These are supposed to be kind of malleable. You can see I just push them over and they just, just kind of want to split. So I don't know. I don't know the history on this engine. Um, kind of a first time for me on this one. So, but uh, yeah, we're just going to get things cleaned up and I'll show you a little bit of that, but not a lot of it because it's pretty boring. Careful when you're handling the cams, you definitely, I mean, I assume if you're doing this, you probably know a little bit about it, but, you know, don't go at, uh, don't go at these like with a scotch bright or a piece of sandpaper or anything. It's kind of nice down at my, my dad has a shop down there, oh, they work on big trucks and farm tractors and things of that nature, and uh, they've got a hot tank, so if you're not familiar with that, it's basically just like a big dishwasher for car parts, you just put your stuff in it hit the button and everything comes out clean and sparkly. And, uh, this can never justify buying one yet. They're rather expensive and the ones that you rent are, are still very expensive. So I'm not a big fan of renting. I definitely like to own my equipment because um, you never have to deal with it. So yeah, anyhow, so this is going to be the process for about the next hour. <laughs> Just taking things and scrubbing them down and cleaning them. So. I'm not going to record it all, but this is the way we're going to go about it. And then once I get things cleaned off, blow them off with a blow nozzle and, uh, you know, set it to the side and wait for the head. Just have everything cleaned up and ready to go. So I just thought I'd show you kind of the start of the process here. I guess we can go ahead and just wrap this one up. Pretty much done for the day. Uh, don't really have anything else to do. I just kind of saved this here for the, for the end of the day and just want to get things cleaned up in anticipation of getting the heads back tomorrow. Um, I've got everything ready to go. We've got our little parts pile over here. Um, let's see, we've got uh, new plug wires, head bolts, a headset, timing belt, thermostat, spark plugs, a couple serpentine belts, and a new water pump. And uh, like I showed you, the once already here, we've got the, uh, the blocks all ready to go the best, best we can get it. And um, I went ahead and just scrubbed the Scrub the stuff off here, got the valve covers cleaned up, and you can see, I mean, a lot of the tarnish and stuff stays on it, but, uh, you know, I know some people are real weenie about that, but we just want to get the, uh, get the big chunks, I guess you could call it. Uh, you know, we don't want any loose debris or anything that's going to, you know, fall, break loose and fall down inside the engine. You know, it's, you could spend hours and hours and hours out there trying to get all the tarnish and stuff off it. So, um, you know, for the job we're doing, uh, this is, this is good, it turned out good. Um, you know, and I'm happy with it. So uh, I wouldn't expect a whole lot more. Like, you know, maybe if it's, I don't know, maybe if you're able to take them to a, uh, you know, to your machine shop or something, when you take your heads and have them, you know, hot tank everything for you, that could be a way to go. So just make sure you label everything good. So I guess that's an option. Well, thanks for watching. I think I'm gonna wrap it up for the evening. Uh, it's getting late. I'm getting hungry. I'm gonna go home and eat some dinner. Uh, a little different video than we normally do. Usually not zipping around there with the camera a whole lot. Because uh, sometimes those videos can get kind of annoying. A little camera on the arm. Ah, that's what we're working on over here. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> so I'm tired. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you liked looking at the tools. Uh, you know, seeing those different things. So if there's anything you want to see in the future, let me know. Drop me a line. I'd be happy to share that with you. Any questions, comments, concerns about methods that we used or, or stuff that you know that works better, I always want to hear about that. If you know something that works better, definitely please don't uh, hold that in. Uh, always open new ideas. I like new things, new tools, new ideas, new methods, anything. So leave it in the comment box below. And I uh, just hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to kind of throw it out there. I know it really wasn't a whole lot of repairing going on, but... Uh, I want you guys to think that I forgot about you. And uh, we are going to finish this Subaru as soon as we get the head back. So stick around. And uh, thanks for watching.